Hey VC, it's me Roger back upstairs in the living room to make a video. How y'all doing? Um, I finally got my car back today. It took over a month. But it looks beautiful. Um, in fact, it looks better than ever because they like detailed it inside and out. And then I drove it home in the rainstorm. <laughs> But I feel more complete now that I have my car. Um, I live in a place where you have to have a car. Um, don't get me started. All right. Um, cheers, VC. We'll see how this video goes. It's been a long day. So yeah, it took more than a month. So that means it's been more than a month since I've done a vinyl update. And even though I'm driving around the stupid rental car, it did the same thing as my car. I would wind up at, at the record store. You know, I'm out doing other things, you know, stuff I gotta do, and I find myself at the record store. How about that? All right, but first I wanna thank DJ Trish for once again sending me some CDLT. Putting a nice note and some stickers. Such a sweetheart. Um, yeah, so we have Cocktail Hour 2016, which is jazz stuff. And then we have a uh, uh, two-parter here. Back to the Beach, parts one and two. Got this hot babe here. Um, yeah. Um, fantastically eclectic taste. Um, and I so appreciate that you think of me. Um, and I, I started to pull aside a little pile of CDs for you. And maybe for Christmas, I am so lame about getting my act together. But really, Trish, I, I will hit you up because I really do appreciate this so much. So thank you. Um, so that was nice getting that. So records, vinyl records. Um, I don't even know where to begin here. Uh, let, let's start with Bob Dylan's new record. Fallen Angels in Columbia. Uh, more him crooning the standards. Um, and some people, it's not going to be their thing at all. Um, but I love it. And you know why? Because um, anyone who thinks he can't sing, they're wrong. I, I think I love his singing. And he's like really trying here. You know, he loves these songs. Um, but what I really love about this record is that it's um, recorded and mixed by Al Schmidt at Capitol Studios in Hollywood. Old school, you know, they're all, in, he and his touring band are all in one room just like knocking out 50 songs, you know. Um, and Al Schmidt's your, your guy to, you know, get that old school sound and it sounds free, it's wonderful. It's, you know, and Bob's a million years old at this point. He can do whatever he wants. He can sing the phone book, you know? As long as it sounds like this, I'm not going to complain, you know? Yeah, it'd be nice if he wrote some new songs, but, jeez. He writes new songs and people poo-poo him, so, I, you know, I don't blame him. All right, enough of that. Um, I also picked this up. It's not much to see here. Um, Kendrick Lamar's Untitled and Mastered. Aftermath, Interscope. Uh, to Pimp a Butterfly was so impressive that, you know, I had to check this out. And um, it's like outtakes and some demos. Um, I'm not a big hip hop guy, as any of you who watch my channel know, but um, I've got some hip hop cred. I, you know, I was into this, you know, that stuff in the 80s, and um, I, I just kind of lost the thread. Um, but this is. It's so great because it's not just like beats and rapping, it's like some singing and some soul and some, there's some bossa nova and there's like, um, you know, kind of a tossed off acoustic guitar thing. I mean, it's so creative and so genre hopping, you know, that um, I can't help but totally respect it. What, what can I say? You know? I still feel like that stuff's not really for me, but I can totally respect where it's coming from. And, what it's doing. Um, next. Yeah, it's 
the new Robert Pollard solo album, Of Course You Are. Um, it took me a while to pick this up, and in fact, I was thinking of stopping with the Pollard session, because it gets expensive. But um, So this is not on Guided by Voices Incorporated. This is on Fire Records out of the UK, and so... It wasn't as easy to get a hold of, but anyway, I got it, and you know what? It's just it's it's great. It's Bob. It's it's you know every time I say oh I you know that's enough, you know he continues to astonish me with his you know insane creativity. It's just he hook up with this new guy, Nick Mitchell. Who adds a lot to this? Yeah, great. Pop, rock, prob, psych, punk, whatever. Here's to you, Bob Pollard. People have been asking me to do a part nine of my Pollard collection. I guess at this point I probably should. Uh, let me show you a couple seven inches. Um, there's Bert Janch. Bert Janch. Blackbirds of Brittany, backed by an instrumental, Cuckoo. Um, an Earth record. Uh, I'm not sure if this is a reissue of a 7 inch or, you know, it says copyright 78, 2016. Uh, anyway, beautiful sleeve. Really, you know, I collect 7 inches for their sleeves, and this is lovely. Um, and beautiful music. I mean, gosh, jeez. Um, this was a record store day thing, or came out on record store day, but I don't think it was particularly, you know, limited. Anyway, beautiful. Uh, I picked up the latest Goat single. Uh, I sing in silence, back with an instrumental, The Snake of Addis Ababa. This isn't a special colored vinyl version, it's just black vinyl. Um, I've said before that I'm on the fence about these guys. Um, I'm trying to Hear the glare. Sorry about that, folks. Um, yeah, go. Uh, Dutch? Maybe I'm not sure. Um, I like how they they're they're working with like Af African rhythms and stuff and African modalities or whatever. Um, but it hasn't always clicked for me. I really like the single though, actually, especially the instrumental B side. So um, I guess they have a new album coming out soon. Goat. Uh, all right, I'm gonna save that for later. Uh, excuse me. Uh, all right, so more new albums. Uh, here is uh, Saint Francis Duo, Peacemaker Assembly. As you can see, it's a totally reflective. Uh, I'm tired. What's, what's the word? It's like foil, foil stamped or whatever. Anyway, so, and a cover by Peter Brotsman. Uh, so St. Francis Duo, yeah, it's um, uh, Stephen O'Malley from Sun, Sun O, and a uh, great free jazz drummer. Um, uh, sorry, Steve Noble, yeah. Um, yeah, I have an, another double LP of theirs, and I saw this in the bins, and I was like, well, yeah, sure. And this is great. Um, um, you know, particularly if, you, if you're a fan of Sun, you know, and his droney guitar playing. What's impressive to me is sort of like Thurston Moore. He's able to, like, do his, you know, admittedly you know, limited sort of thing with his guitar, but in a free jazz context. Um, and, you know, Steve Noble just plays his ass off here. And, yeah, this is cool. Alright. This originally came out on CD in 2012. This is Locrian with uh, Christoph Heeman. Really cool gatefold cover here. Um, this is its first vinyl release on... Um, Handmade Birds. Yeah, Locrian is a band I've talked about a lot. Um, 
I really dig them. Experimental metal, I guess. Kind of drony, but not... Not like... Not like sun, really. More darker, if you can imagine. And more synths and dark ambient thing. I, I, I love this. This is great. Um, I don't know much about Christoph Heeman. He, he does like electronics on this. Uh, mostly instrumental. A little bit of shrieking. You know, but... Yeah, great. All right, moving on to some reissues. Folks have been after me to get these, and I wish I jumped on them sooner, really. Um, uh, this heat. Um, <clears throat> originally on piano records in uh, the UK, when it came out like 77, 76, 77, 78, I'm not even sure, around that time. Um, now this is the first, the first edition of the re, you know, the reissue that has this nice obi, and it's a gatefold and all that kind of stuff. Um, and there's this, and then there's the reissue of their 12 inch uh, health and efficiency. Uh, found these at Grimey's, but um, the main one. Deceit, I had to get the repress, which is not in a gatefold, doesn't have the OB. Um, but, wow. Now, this heat was kind of on my radar back in the 80s, but these things were never issued in the US. And um, I think I might have remembered seeing this around maybe, because it was on rough trade. Um, but, you know, I, I missed out. And I was aware of Charles Hayward through his work with Bill Aswell, who I was into in the 80s and 90s and early 2000s. But holy cow, is this a brilliant debut. Uh, wh what do you call this? I mean, it's recorded in like 76, 77, so punk, but it's already post-punk. It's already, it's so experimental. Um, kind of reminds me why post anything is a really lazy way to talk about anything, you know, because post what, well, well then what, you know, what? this stuff sounds so fresh, you know, when you think about like, I don't know, the Sex Pistols, you know, punk, that stuff sounds pretty conventional nowadays, this, this will never sound conventional, <laughs> I, yeah, so great, and of course on their 12 inch they're moving in a, on the first side a more rock kind of direction, um, but the B-side is a multi-speed kind of drone, you can play it at any speed, um, which I checked out, it was pretty fun, um, and then this was their last album, uh, it came out in like 79, no, 81, uh, more like singing and rock oriented, but super paranoid and, you know, post-punk, you know, but you know, punk, punk was post before it ever even got started. You know? Grill Marcus can be kind of a twat, but his book, uh, Lipstick Traces, kind of like maps punk onto, onto postmodernism in a way. It's an amusing book, has lots of great pictures. All right. Found this used. Boris. Absolute Ego. Uh, reissue of their first album on... Southern Lord, I think this is the 2010 reissue, spread out over two LPs with a bonus track, Drone Evil 2. Uh, yeah, of course. God, this is heavy. Heavy drone. It's like to find this used a grimy, so it was, you know, half the median price of what it goes for on Discogs. Totally mint. Totally psyched about that. Here's uh, first UK pressing of Joy Division's Unknown Pleasures. You might be thinking, Roger, why don't you are you already own that, right? No, sorry. Uh, I had friends, I had girlfriends who owned it. Uh, I never actually owned this myself, and um, found it for a good price because uh, it was filthy and cleaned up great, and you know. A, Again, this is kind of music that sounds timeless. 
It's of an era, but will never sound dated. Excuse me. All right, from Joy Division to Prague. Bill Bruford. Feels good to me. Now, that cover is horrible. Uh, but it was original UK Polydor from 1977. It's got a great line of people playing on it, especially Dave Stewart, not the Eurythmics guy, but the Canterbury keyboard player. Brilliant. Alan Holdsworth, Annette Peacock on vocals, Kenny Wheeler on trumpet, Jeff Berlin on bass. Uh, and this is great. This is really great. Way better than the cover. What an awful cover. I mean, um, yeah, super happy about that. Uh, this, too. I've been kind of looking for this. Uh, Phil Manzanera, 801. Uh, listen now. Original UK on Polydor from 1977. This clearly came from the same collection. Um cheap again but it was filthy and I cleaned it up and it plays great uh, yeah Phil Mantanera from Roxy Music uh, Eno's on this um, Eddie Jobson a lot of those folks uh, Mel Collins uh, yeah Prague terrific alright now this next one I'm looking through the world music guide. It's one of those days where I like I find myself at the record store. The car has driven me to the record store, um, and yet there's really nothing. Um, but I can't leave empty-handed, so I'm I'm thumbing through like the world music section, and I and I see this combo FH Vecchi, uh, which I guess is Czechoslovakian for things. Um, Panton. Czechoslovakian label. Now, uh, you know, this place had a little sticker, Czech pressing, and so it wasn't a dollar or anything, um, but it, this is not world music. And, you know, I looked at these guys and I, you know, was looking at the liner notes and actually looked on Discogs and um, it's like, actually, this is a deal. Um, this is total, like, Canterbury influenced. Jazz Rock out of Czechoslovakia from 1980. Um, I think they made two albums, this being the one that's most highly regarded. Um, yeah, this was a fine. This is terrific, terrific. You know, just the kind of thing that the VC has sensitized to me. You know, before I was in the VC, I, I would have been like, what the hell is this? And been looking for. Um, but yeah, I took kind of a chance on this, and it's terrific. Really awesome. Great find. All right, here's a good find. Um, maybe the same day. Um, Wayne Shorter, Supernova. Um, Blue Note. Really sorry about the glare. Blue Note from 1970. Uh, I've been wanting to copy this forever. This is one of my favorite Wayne Shorter records. What a great band. Um, Wayne Shorter on saxophone, John McLaughlin on guitar, Sonny Sherrock on guitar, uh, Walter Booker on classical guitar on one track, um, Miroslav Batus on bass, Jack DeJanette on drums, Chakria on drums and vibes, Ayrto on percussion, um, Maria Booker sings on. Uh, just killer Miles influenced, uh, you know, jazz fusion. And it's original pressing, you know, Van Gelder and the wa Dead Wax. Um, and it was cheap, and the reason why was because it was spattered with paint. You know, someone's painting their walls, and it's like, oh no, my Blue Note record has paint all over it. The good thing is, is that they never played it again, which is good. Um, and so, you know, I, this was maybe, and this is a place that, again, they know what they have. So this wasn't in the dollar bin or anything, but super cheap for what this is. So I brought it home, and I'm like, well, this is going to be a challenge. Can I, can I get this paint off? And with some elbow grease and several spins on the record cleaning machine, I 
This plays great. Great. I'm gonna do a video about record cleaning because, you know, a record cleaning machine pays for itself. Uh, here's Les McCann, live at Montro. I showed Invitation to Open This, I think it's called. Another Atlantic record by him. This is a double live LP. That's a great picture. Some funky clavinet on here. I wasn't expecting the vocals, but they're good. They're, um, this is funky, funky, funky. Great, great, great. I need layers, apparently. Um, you know, there's tons of Les McCann records in the bins, but, you know, I'm going on people's recommendations here. Um, yeah, this is great. Uh, here's Larry Coriel's Fairyland. Uh, recorded live at Montreux in June 1971. Just a trio, Larry Coriel on, on guitar, Chuck Rainey on bass, and Pretty Purdy on drums, killer rhythm, rhythm section. Um, he sings a little bit. Um, and this is not on Vanguard. This is uh, on Mega Records out of Nashville. Great proggy cover. Um, white label promo. A little promo sticker here. Uh, I've seen people show this in the VC, and this is really, this is a keeper of Larry Coriolis' some, somewhat spotty catalog. Um, even his singing is tolerable because, you know, it's a power trio with killer rhythm section. This is, yeah, recorded in 71, released in 74 on Mega Records. And um, turns out, um, VC member, at least on the Facebook side, Jim Hart. Hey, Jim, I don't know if you're, you watch my channel, but uh, turns out he, he had found this and it was sealed. And he opened it just to see if it was a white label promo and then took it to the store. And then it now belongs to me. Pretty cool. Uh, yeah, I'd done a trade, and so this is one that had been sitting in the bins for a while, and the, yeah, that's a bad cover. Let's just be frank. That's not a very creative cover. Uh, but Chico Freeman, Peaceful Heart, Gentle Spirit on Contemporary from 1980. Great band again with James Newton on flute. Uh, Kenny Kirkland on piano, Jay Hart on vibes, John Koenig on cello, Buster Williams on bass, Billy Hart on drums, Paulino da Costa on percussion, and Efrain Toro on percussion. Um, this is great, great. Um, I, what is there to say? Chico Freeman, what a great player, Un way underrated saxophonist, but he also plays some great flute and alto and uh, bass clarinet on this, this is great. Uh, not expensive, um, but a really, really excellent jazz album. We're getting there, folks. Uh, Don Cherry, Art Deco on A&M from 1989. I've had this digitally for a long, long time. Uh, wonderful, you know, if you love Don Cherry, uh, wonderful sort of reunion of Ornette's band with Don, uh, Charlie Hayden and Billy Higgins on bass and drums. And then uh, an interesting choice, James Clay on tenor as Don Cherry's foil, as playing sort of the Ornette role. Now James Clay, is, he's not Ornette, he's much more of an old school bopper. Um, but this works. and. Um, Good thing this is kind of cheap, actually, because uh, we're well into the CD era here, and, and they've tried to cram almost an hour onto this. Um, but I was surprised. I cleaned it up, and it it actually sounds it sounds pretty nice. You know, uh, it's not. I'd, I'll have to compare it to the CD. You know, but happy to have it. I mean, come on, Don Cherry. All right, just a couple more. Sounds like that's my wife texting me. Expansion by Denny Zeitlin with George Marsh and Mel Graves. This is a this is not the original Private Press that he put out in 1978. This is a uh, later small label repress 
on Arch, 1750 Arch. No, originally it was from 75, I guess, and this is a 70. That's confusing. 73, 70, anyway. This is great. Now, Denny's Island made a bunch of records for Columbia in the 60s that are kind of in a Bill Evans piano trio mode, but here he's gone electric, and he's got a band, and it's all over the place. This is, um, this is terrific. Really nice find. I, you know, it's been shown in the BC, and when, when I saw it, I, I thought, well, I gotta grab it. Really glad I did. Whereas finally, this one, wait, before I show that, yeah, I did a trade. Some of the, some of those I got in trade, and here's another seven inch that I, I would not have paid my own cash money for it, but I felt like for free. <laughs> Isn't it interesting how we rationalize? So yeah, here's um, this shaped seven inch single for Neil Young, Crazy Horses. Uh, Southern Pacific backed with Motor City from the Reactor album, which I have bought back in the day in 1981. Uh, this is just something you don't see around. And you know, I thought of Tim Guthrie. Hey Tim, if you're watching, I doubt you are since you're traveling the world at the moment. Um, so yeah, this opens up. And, uh, and then inside is this shaped seven inch. Now I didn't get this to play. Um, I just got it to have. Um, I'm, uh, I run hot and cold with Neil Young, um, but at the time, 1981, you know, that album, Reactor, is pretty heavy. Some nasty guitar sounds. Uh, anyway, this is a cool object to have. All right, finally, last and least, because I really wasn't very impressed with this, frankly, uh, Trio Comprovisations by Regan Reisick and on piano with Larry Goldman on bass and John Vasta on drums. Um, I mean, actually, it, it's okay. It's a private press thing on Happening Records from 1981. Uh, I think he only made a few records, although I looked him up. He's still active in New York, I think, playing kind of a piano bar thing. Not sure. Um, trained musician, went to Juilliard, I think. Um, he can play, you know, all these guys can play. And sometimes it, get in, it gets interesting, um, but it's a little more inside than I than I want from my private press jazz. Well, let's put it that way. Uh, on the other hand, you know, I traded for it. It had been sitting there for a while, so I thought, why not? And um, the wife liked it, so that's reason enough to keep it, right? Thanks for hanging out, people. That was a long video. Um, I watch it before I upload it, and if it's too, if it's too too, I might spare you all. Cheers again. Um, thank you all for your response to my last video about the Sati scores and my piano playing. Um, I really hesitated before making that video. I thought, well, very few people are going to be interested in that. But um, anyway, it was gratifying. Very, very gratifying. Cheers, VC. Um, you know me. I'll be back soon. Take care.